Well, I love her, but I love to fish. I spend all day out on this lake, and hell is all I catch. But today she met me at the door, said I would have to choose if I hit that fishing hole today. She'd be packing all her things and she be gone by noon. I'm gonna miss her when I get home. Hi, Steve. Von Brand here for the Bass College. We're down here at Knoxontown Lake. I'm here today with my brother, Kurt Von Brandt, up here in the front running the trolling motor. This is Tom Wolverton, our pro staff. And uh, we're going to be working some of the uh, creeks back in here. We've got crappies and uh, we've got some white perch and stuff that come back in here to spawn. And uh, the pads are just starting to come up. So we're going to be throwing some chatter baits. We're going to throw spinner bait early, uh, some rattle trap type baits. Uh, if that doesn't work, then we're probably just going to go into all the laydowns on the North Shore, start flipping in some dirty jigs with some granny bass trailers. So hopefully we'll see you guys in a minute. We've got 37-degree uh, air temperature. Water temperature still in the 50s, though, uh, 53 to 55 degrees. So hopefully we're going to get some action soon, and we'll see you guys in a minute with some bass. So, Kurt, tell us a little bit about, like, where we are now, what, why you're here, what we're fishing, why you're fishing here, and then uh, tell us where we're going to be going next and why we're going to make that move. Uh, first thing you want to do this time of year is try to fish the emergent vegetation in this lake. There's a little bit of milfoil mixed in, but ma mainly you're talking lily pads. That's what you're trying to hit. Uh, your shallow flats with lily pads on them. You want to hit that first thing with your reaction bait to see if there's some aggressive fish up shallow. If you don't catch those fish, then you're going to work more towards your steeper banks with heavy wood cover. You hit them with crank baits, your same reaction baits, or then slow way down and flip them. Uh, mainly on a lot of these smaller lakes, you kind of just want to fish around, see, let the fish tell you what's going on, and then adjust. Uh, you can get at the mouse creeks on some of these shallow flat points you have. What's that on a red eye shad? Red eye shad and sexy shad. We got some schooling fish here on schools of shad. Look at the belly. Small fish. What'd you pick that one up? What'd you pick him up on the battery? What kind is that? It's Excalibur quarter ounce. What are these fish doing, Tom? Tell them a little about that. They're busting on the shad. There's a little shad back here in the bench. Yeah, we got a school shad back here. The bass are all congregated right off this point feeding on the shad. shallow flats lower end is more you're at the bank goes out to the creek channel so when they want to spawn generally it's traditionally up in this upper half of the lake however there are some really large fish in the shallow or in the deeper end of the lake 
but your, more of your numbers will be up here in the upper half of the lake. What's that on a red eye shad? Red eye shad and sexy shad. We got some schooling fish here on schools of shad. Look at the belly. Fat though. Rattle and rap one. Look how fat that fish is. That's why the state record can be here, Tom. It's funny how the area matters. Let me get the pliers out, Steve. That's a nice one there, and uh, they're down in the milfoil out here. If you're not right in the milfoil, if you're 20 yards off of where the milfoil bed is, you get nothing. You move into it. See how fat yard are feeding on them shades, Steve. Here's, uh, here's our time.